So it's great night. It's Hanukkah. Very, a very, very, very special night. You know, we, we just think about Hanukkah as being Hanukkah, you know, eating donuts and lighting candles. But, you know, we don't really understand or don't really incorporate the whole idea of the miracle of Hanukkah, the miracle of the light. The ca candles in general are healing all the time. If somebody is feeling down and depressed, and what do we do on your sites? We light candles. Candles, they have a special meaning. They're not just in the real world. They transcend into other worlds. And we, we have the opportunity from the candles to really enjoy the light of the candle and to understand that it's an opportunity for us to engage in miracles, in really great miracles. And the greatest miracle was the first one that happened, right? There was a big war and very few Jewish people and very many, many, many of the Greeks. And yet there was this amazing miracle of this war where the very few Jews overcame the very many, many, many Greeks. That was one miracle, right? And of course, that second miracle of the light, the oil being enough for like maybe even one night and ending up to light for all eight nights. So it's a night, it is a night of miracles. For me, for me personally, I really, I see the menorah behind you, Rabbi, and it, I see the light of the menorah behind you. And the light for me, the light really helps me transcend into a place of miracles. So I want to share <laughs> something that happened to me today. And I think it's going to resonate for people on a very, very global level. So it's right before Hanukkah, right? We're going into Hanukkah. The first night was tonight, but tomorrow is Shabbos Hanukkah. And I'm up here in the country, upstate, very isolated, away from everybody. And of course, I love our Shabbos, Shabbatones that we do up here. They're so incredible. We all come together. I don't know how many ragers are aware that we are actually doing Shabbatones up here. We're being very careful about them. We're doing COVID safety. People have to sign waivers that they're COVID negative. And we create social distance and we all wear masks. So on that, from that perspective, yeah, I'm able to connect to people. But really, while I'm here on, on, on a regular basis, I'm extremely isolated. And I was really looking forward to Shabbos Hanukkah because all my children said that they are all coming up here for Shabbos Hanukkah. And most of my children I see a lot. I see my children who live in Brooklyn very often. I see my children who live in New Jersey very often. But I have one daughter one of my triplets who lives all the way, she was living for so many years in San Jose and I really miss them. They were in San Jose a million miles away and I really, really miss them. And then sure enough, last year, the rabbi, my son-in-law, a law school graduate from Penn, fabulous, he decided not to pursue the law degree and instead he decided that he wants to pursue being a rabbi they decided they're leaving San Jose and they're moving to Chicago. And I was like the happiest person in the whole world. My children were gonna be living not seven hours of a flight away from me, which meant traveling time of at least 10 hours by the time you get to the airport. Get from the airport, it was easy, a 10 hour traveling. They were going to be living one hour away by airplane. They were gonna be in Chicago one hour away. And yesterday I spoke to my daughter and I said, this is so wonderful. You're right here, you're in Chicago and you're coming for Hanukkah and they were gonna be here tonight. They were supposed to arrive tonight. And I was so, so, so happy. Sure enough today at 11 o'clock, my daughter calls me and says, we can't come. My son-in-law just tested positive for Corona, for COVID. And he didn't just test positive, it wasn't a random test. He had symptoms. Last night, she said, Ima, he was up the whole night, he had chills, he was coughing, he wasn't feeling good. So he went in for a corona test today and the rapid test came back positive, but in all likelihood, it's not just the rapid test, we're gonna get the overnight test tomorrow. We can't come where he has to go into isolation and all of us need to be in quarantine. 
And I was so sad. Why am I telling you this story? Where does this connect to Hanukkah? Where does this connect to the lights? Because the ordinary me, the regular me, just like any other normal person, I felt very negative. I felt very angry. I felt like, what is this all about? This is so unfair. Finally, my daughter, as I tell you the story, I'm almost crying telling you the story. Because when she called me on the phone and I was in the grocery buying fruits and vegetables for this amazing visit, I stayed up the whole morning and last night preparing the beds and the blankets and the pillows. And then she calls and says she's not coming. And I, I really, I thought I was just going to start crying inside the grocery store. I felt so sad. And you know what? I was consumed with negativity. I submerged in negativity. I was angry. I was, I got, I got terribly sad. But that is a normal reaction. Isn't that normal? Is, wouldn't everybody feel that way? You know, I haven't seen her in so long because of Corona. Here she is living one hour away. We finally have the whole thing organized. I'm staying up a whole night, making the beds, preparing the food. And now there I am finding out that she's not coming. That's where the light of Hanukkah comes in. Why? Because that light, that is a light of miracles. Now, what is the greatest miracle? We're like regular, normal human beings. What is the greatest miracle that we could possibly do for ourselves? The greatest miracle that we could do for ourselves is transform our nature, our natural nature. My nature was, I was gonna be upset. I was gonna be angry. I was gonna be depressed. I was, I was really angry. I was going to take it out in a lot of ways. I was angry. And of course, who do you get angry at first all the time? We get angry at Hashem. We say, Hashem, this isn't fair. You know, I'm supposed to be keeping Hanukkah tonight. I'm supposed to be keeping Shabbos coming up. I don't know. I'm really, really angry. But you know what? That light of Hanukkah, that light behind you, Rabbi Katsin, when I lit my Hanukkah candle tonight, I was in a battle. I was in a battle of my natural nature of becoming negative, right, normal, turning it into something positive. And I sat there, I made my bracha on the candles and I looked at the candles and you know what I realized? All of a sudden, I was looking at everything so differently. How was I looking at it differently? I said to myself, what if she would have gotten on the plane? What if tomorrow, after we were sitting at the Friday night table with my 92 year old mother, what if at that point, suddenly Menachem felt he's not feeling well? My mother, my 92 year old mother would have been in quarantine. My 92 year old mother would have been at risk of getting sick. All of us sitting at the table, all of the children, all of the grandchildren, myself included, we all would have been at risk of being possibly corona contaminated, right? And that was the miracle of those lights. The miracle of those menorah lights was about the fact that I took my natural nature, a natural feeling of negativism, I looked at those lights and I said, no, thank you, Hashem. Thank you so much for saving me from the possibility of being quarantined, of being isolated, of being busy taking care of my mother, God forbid, God forbid if she had gotten sick, and all the many children and grandchildren that all would have been possibly infected because he wasn't just testing for corona. He has symptoms, he has fever, he has coughing. So this is not like a matter of just taking a test randomly and maybe it's really a false positive, maybe it's really false. The man has, my son-in-law has symptoms and those symptoms are clearly, probably he, the, the, the longer test is gonna come back as positive. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about tonight. I'm thinking about the balance that we go through, the battle that we go through in our lives to compensate for positive, possible negative symptoms that we have or negative traits that we have. And how do we do that? 
we, we take it. Hashem is giving us, he's giving us a gift. He's saying here, for eight days, light these candles, look at them, and the illumination of these candles, the, the light of the candles, the power of the candle is going to take you from a place of nature, from a nature place, from a natural place. That candle, the miracle of Hanukkah is going to take you and transcend you to a place of positivity. It's going to, it's going to be a miracle. What you look, what you were thinking before you looked at those candles. Oh, I'm so angry. I'm so upset. How could this happen? My children aren't coming. How could this be? Suddenly, I don't feel that at all. In fact, in fact, I felt so positive that I, I called up Gabby, Gabby, our Gabby, who organizes all the Shabbatones. And I said to Gabby, Gabby, you know what? I have this whole house prepared for my daughter. The blankets, the pillows, the sheets, they're all fresh, they're clean, washed, pressed. I have, the house is hot and warm and beautiful. It's in the mountains, Gabby. Use that house to do mitzvos. So not only did I turn into a positive person, but I took it and I created a kindness out of it. So now two miracles happened. What are the two miracles? One is that now I'm a positive person. I don't feel any negative. I am grateful. I'm saying, Hashem, thank you so much for not letting them come on that airplane tonight. They were supposed to arrive tonight. Thank you so much for giving him the test, the positivity of the Corona test today and not waiting till tomorrow. And number two, thank you for the opportunity for giving me this house that I can invite people to up in the mountains and say, Gabby, I have room for a lot of people in that house, bring them up. And then what Gabby, the most positive person in the world calls back five minutes later and says, I've got it all set up. We're good to go. So I think the beauty of Hanukkah, the beauty of those lights, I love looking at your menorahs over there, Rabbi. My menorah is upstairs. The beauty of those lights is in the miracle, the miracle of us transcending from a place of nature, of what our natural attitude is going to be and turning it, switching it into something very, very positive. So that's my message for tonight, Rabbi. What an amazing message. It really reminds me of something, please correct me, that very natural instinctive reaction is always fear, surviving. And therefore, whatever happens, first of all, I'm scared, fight or flight, and it takes time, a few seconds at least, to connect, so to speak, the mind, right? To overcome the natural instinct of fear and overcome fear with love, with acceptance, with respect, and decide rationally, intellectually what to do. In a way, it's overcoming the animal within which is very powerful, very scared, very much hating, correct? And yeah. how you overcome this darkness with the light of your wisdom, your intellect, your experience. Unbelievable. I just think that just as Jews, we always look at the light or we try to be the light. Like I know Rabbi gets in, you're always like the light. As soon as you walk into the room, you're always have the smile on your face. You're always greeting people, whether you know them or whether you don't, you're making them feel very comfortable. Same thing with Dr. Faye. Mm -hmm. And then now Alex, Alex walks into her room. He just has a smile on his face. He just starts mingling with everybody. And he just yes. makes everybody feel comfortable. So I think that's just um, our nature of, of being Jewish, just being the light as soon as you walk into the room, no matter what. Yeah. Dr. Phil, what an amazing message Beautiful. that actually um, Irina corrected me. She said within every single one of us, there is a hidden power of light. We shouldn't mm -hmm. identify ourselves by these instincts or animalistic instincts of fear or hatred. On the contrary, the essence of who we are is light. And we need to open external powers. Irina, uh, I love what you said. I love what you said because Rabbi Katzin is right. What you did is you took away the light of the menorah is fabulous, but you're saying something more. You're saying that that light enters the soul and that Rabbi Katzin, Alex, Julia, 
They become a light. But guess what, Irina? I need to tell you something. You have become a light. You have become that light. It's amazing in it's how much you have grown. Like I was listening to you the other night when we were talking about the yard site of your grandmother, right? And her name was what? Her name was Simcha. Yeah. How beautiful. What did you do? You took the light of her name, of the name Simcha, and you have in you've internalized that light on that Shabbat when you decided that you were taking that name also and that your name was now going to be Irina Simcha. And that was you taking the candle, that light, that was the in, that was the essence of your grandmother. I'm looking at your face now and I see that light within you. You took that light, which is the essence of your grandmother's Simcha and you internalized that light and that Simcha became you. And I am not exaggerating. If anything, I'm minimizing it because you are the picture of Simcha. You are the picture of light. You, you never know what a room is like before you walk into the room. So you don't know the change that happens when you walk into the room. Before you walk into a room, Irina Simcha, the room is, it's okay, it's fine. You come in and the menorah that we see behind Rabbi Katzin now, that light, multiply it by a million. That's the light that you walk in with, with your smile. And yes, it's true, Alex has it. It's, it's like right there. And Julia, is the, Julia look, at what, look at the growth that has happened over here. So Irina, that was beautiful what you just said about taking the light and internalizing it. And there's our, I see, I see Yuri and Yuri, Yuri, we love you. We are hey, so- Hey, Yuri. Um, yeah, Rabbi Katsin, maybe you want to have the others also share? Yeah, but first of all, I think that we want to congratulate Yuri and Simcha, Simcha and Yuri with a first, first uh, holiday of light together. What a miracle. We're so happy to have you together. Yuri, you want to say something? Yuri, what do you say? What I can say, uh, happy holidays, first thing. The second thing, as we know, Hanukkah, it's a miracle because we had a small katani, we're really saying, I don't know in English. A small jar. Small jar, thank you. Supposed to be enough for one day, but it was enough for eight days. So it's a big miracle. And I hope our life is going to be with the same miracle. So if we need to get one miracle, extent of that, we're going to get eight. It's such a beautiful idea. First of all, it teaches us a lesson also to see potential with each single one of us, that it's not just about the oil somewhere, but it's actually about the light within our souls. And most importantly, to see this very light within ourselves. So I see so much light, Yuri, in your soul. And I remember every time I see you, who was your grandfather? It was a big rabbi, Kabbalist. Who was he? Tell us. He was, uh, his name was Abu Aron, first thing. He was the main rabbi in the uh, Soviet Union in Tajikistan. And he was the person who helped the people. Like he never argued, was helping whatever he can do it was doing it for free he was a generous um, and altruistic person and i think that his picture today is in a like main bukharian synagogue in queens am i right bjcc yes. yeah which is bukharian oh. jewish center so yeah. it is isn't it amazing that you are his descendant and he is above right now in in, in heavens rejoicing and sending you blessings seeing you together with your wonderful wife uh, building a Jewish family. I'm, I'm always amazed, Rabbi, at the miracle of Hashem or God making or finding people that belong together. That's the part, you know, from, because I knew, I knew Irina, Yuri, we knew Irina before she met you. And the magic of the way Irina is now and the happiness that she is now from just meeting you and like, like, how did God do that? Where, 
how, how does that happen that he makes these matches that work out that those are miracles. Those are real miracles. And now I can't imagine either one of you not being with the other one. You know, it, it's, it's such, it, you belong together. It's beautiful. So it's just, it's, you know, as, as you are on Irina Simcha, and then Yuri is right there. I love it. It's such a beautiful, beautiful picture. And Hashem should just grant you many, many, many years of having this fresh love for each other. It's beautiful. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Julia, you want to say something? want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I would, but unless Alex, Alex wants to go first. Well, Alex already spoke a little bit, and I'm sure he's going to add to that, but he said a few words. Yeah. So now you can say. So the message I feel about Hanukkah is, first of all, I feel like the light is spread all year round. You know, I always feel like, um, and especially like with connecting with everyone, I think that um, gravitates the light even more. It makes it even brighter. But I think on Hanukkah, it's especially more important because, you know, it's also like a symbol of um how do i say it it's just also just a symbol of like remembering what our ancestors went through and how hard it was for them but they never like gave up they always like persevered right and yep. yeah what else can i say and i just you know being around you and dr Fay and all the rage teachers i mean you guys you guys are my source of light like i feel like we ragers we're just like the kind of the plugs and you guys are all our sources because we're getting all that knowledge all that experience all that wisdom from you guys it's we're like kind of like i don't know how to say like sucking it and then we're using that knowledge we're applying it to when we have our families and our significant others and then from that from when you get married you have even more light like when I was on the Shabbatons for Dr. Faye, I got to meet Alex's light. I got to meet Rabbi Pollock's light, Rabbi Delman's light, all these beautiful little lights coming and shining through from, from beautiful neshamas. And hopefully, Irina Yuri, I can't wait to one day, God willing, meet your new light. Not to put you on the spot, but you know. And that's why like, I feel like me personally, I in my job is I also feel like I have this kind of light. And this is why when I have WhatsApp, I go by the name guiding light. And people are like, why don't you just use the name Julia? I'm like, because guiding light, it's, I feel it's who I am. And that's why I also chose the name Lior because it symbolizes light. And this is something I want to bring into the world through religion, through my job and through all my aspects of life and just be this positive source. And I feel like it was there, but I feel like it radiated when I joined Rage and things like that. What a beautiful name. What an amazing Hanukkah name, Dr. Pei, correct? I, I, you know, I just want to jump out of my screen and just give you the biggest hug in the world because I've known you for a couple of years already because we've traveled together with Rage. Like quite yeah, you're my world traveler, buddy. Yeah, we're traveling buddies. And now to like listen to you, I don't know whether, you know, you see the, the light that you are, you have become, you have become a light. You are a light. And last week, Shabbos, when you went to um, Rabbi Delman's house, Delman's house, yeah, I got reports back that you were the light of that Shabbat. So yeah, really? Rabbi Katsin is the light. Alea was the light. Rabbi's our light. But Liara, you are, Liara, you are, you have become, you have become a beacon of light. Thank you. Uh, it's, you know, they say things from the heart, they resonate. Yeah. These are words from the heart. I'm so proud yeah. of you. I'm so I also, thank yeah. you. I also felt Leia was there with me. So I feel like we were both the lights representing from what you taught us. She was there with me. So it was nice spending time with her too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's oh. so beautiful. Yeah. I want to thank you, Dr. Faye, for actually introducing uh, Leia to us and give us, giving us an opportunity to welcome her into our families. It's really amazing. Thank you, Dr. Faye, you did so much. And Alex, how are you? Thank God, I'm, I'm great, Rabbi Kitsen. I'm, feel, I'm feeling uh, miraculously amazing. I really, I really am. And, and your family is with you? Thank God, yeah, they're next door. My daughter is, uh, you know, I'm sure she, she's singing Hanukkah songs in her own language. It's very cute. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm afraid she, she, she's, she's having a lot of donuts tonight, so 
the the night is going to be pretty amazing also uh but yeah it just uh, it's you know such a beautiful holiday just to add to what julia was alex saying. by the way just before mm -hmm. you say, i want to tell you you taught me that there is a room for a miracle in your everyday life yeah you taught me in other words you taught me uh how to believe in miracles you you know why you Hello. don't know why it's yeah. we're gonna we're gonna leave it be, no we're gonna leave it between us because many many times I, I i mean i remember this moment when i met you and your wife remember okay remember this amazing so i want to thank oh. you and meanwhile yes. yes i'm listening to your message but you taught me a lot much more than right. much more than i taught you you taught me a lot you taught me to believe in people to believe in you and to believe in miracles thank you so much thank you uh that's that that's a hard thing to follow because you know the, uh the same goes for me i mean i i always um look at you dr Fay, and you know uh as uh just the brightest lights that uh you know i could i could only uh re reach for um so i just want to thank you for being that source of inspiration for me uh and not just not just a source of inspiration but also a source of um counsel and advice and um, ultimately like a guide how to improve my personal life, my family life, um, and also uh, be able to, uh, you know, reach those around me and um, try, you know, try to encourage them to do the same. Um, I, I do want to expand on something that Julia said, actually. So, uh, you know, eight, eight days of Hanukkah. And, and it's really amazing because the number eight itself, you know, in, in, in a typical week, we have seven days. Uh, you, you know, Monday through, through well, so really Sunday through Shabbos, right? Because we're Jews. Um, and that eighth day is, um, that num number eight is above nature. Um, and the, the miracles that Julia just talked about, the miracles that Dr. Faye mentioned, um, not, you know, not just those that were happening to our forefathers, like the, the oil lasting eight days, like the tiny, tiny, tiny Jewish um army of tzaddikim, right? These, uh, these guys who just uh, wanted to learn Torah all day, defeating these mighty Greek, Greek army. Um, certainly an open miracle, but those miracles that are happening to us every single day, uh, like what uh, Dr. Zakheim shared uh, with uh, her family, um, you know, not, not being able to make it for Hanukkah to, to Woodridge, but at the same time, keeping uh, Bubby uh, safe, safe and sound and uh, opening doors for more opportunities. So I think, I think one thing that I learned this year is, um, you know, it's, it's all about a matter of perspective, right? We see, we see something happening and it could be, it could, it could appear to anyone as the greatest challenge, as an obstacle. And, um, you know, uh, our first instinct is to react to it. Like, so, like it's being done against us. But really in Judaism, we believe that things are done for us. Uh, and therefore, everything, every single thing that happens is really an opportunity. It's not a challenge. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to uplift that moment. It's an opportunity to do something positive. It's an opportunity to bring Hashem into the picture, uh, to bring Hashem into this world. Uh, and, uh, you know, we certainly understand this. And thank God for rage that embodies this message. Um, and uh, I just, uh, you know, just like today is the first day. You know, by day eight, my, my personal uh, message is that uh, even though there are eight days of Hanukkah, that day number eight is above nature. And therefore, even after ha Hanukkah, you know, uh, even after day eight, day, it should last us the, the entire year. Because miracles, sure, they're, they're even more available now during Hanukkah, during the eight days, but really they're available all year. And we have the opportunity to tap into that. Wow, that is so beautiful. That that is, I love that. I love that. That now at, during these eight days, we have like it's glaring because look at the menorah right behind us by Rabbi Katzin. But you're saying miracles are they? We we just we have to see them all the time because they're happening every single minute. Yeah, it's really true. Um, Rabbi Katzin, I don't know if you wanted to go back to that topic that you brought up about fear. For some reason, I felt like that was like something that was really important to you at that moment. So do you want to talk about that? No, I, I felt that what you said is actually um, you um, 
in a way brought the title overcoming negativity or darkness with light and you said that it's overcoming your nature yeah. and i thought what is nature and i just thought that nature is fear I th no, am I right or not? Please tell me. Well, it's interesting because I think that we each have our own natures. So for one person, their nature might be fear. That, that would be their battle. I don't want to be afraid of things. I want to overcome my fear. But what about a person whose nature is exactly the opposite of fear, where they are fearless and nothing scares them. They have no boundaries whatsoever. They're just going. There's a mountain, a cliff. They're gonna jump down without even paying attention to how far down the cliff is. They just need to go because their nature is to be fearless. Reckless. You in this reckless. case, it yeah. will be probably reckless. I'll tell you. First of all, of course, you you broadened this um, conversation. Um, what I was thinking is um, that our rabbis actually say that there are two Ramban Nachmanides says there are two major powers with the, with the soul. You, really, this is your area of expertise, but uh, Nachmanides Ramban said, it is love and hatred, or love and fear. Now forget about hatred, love and fear. And he said, if you take all the commandments, all the positive commandments that we have, respect, love, share, give, contribute, come out of love. All negative commandments, uh, don't uh, disrespect or don't steal or don't kill, whatever it is, all come from uh, be careful. So thinking about it, I came to the realization that there are two most powerful instincts or reflex in human soul. One is, I think Charles Darwin actually wrote about this, two major mechanisms of human behavior. One is, uh, to survive, and therefore anything that I'm scared, I will not do. It's surviving. And another one is, I want my kind of, you know, to continue. This is love. No? There are two most powerful instincts, to love and to be careful. Very interesting. Now, really, both of them... No, they don't necessarily negate each other. Love can be a positive thing, right? Yeah. Love can be positive. Let me, let me just mute them. Love, love can be positive and, and fear can also be positive, but love can also be negative um, because to love something is wonderful, but what about if you love something only because you need to love it, but it's not a good thing to love? It, it, I love smoking cigarettes. Is that a good love? No. So the question is, how do you use these feelings? How do you use them in a positive way? Because every feeling can be used in a way that's good and can be used in a way that's bad. Take a simple jealousy, right? We all think, oh, jealousy is bad. How bad can jealousy be if God is called a jealous God, right? Is that not, is that not correct? Right? So really jealousy can be a very good thing. Why? Because if I am jealous of something that someone is doing, then I can aspire to doing the same thing. That uh, I'm not jealous that I want to take it away from them. I'm jealous of the opportunity that they have to be doing something. And I want that opportunity also. What do you think of that, Rabbi? Do you think that that's possible, what I'm saying? Yes, if we learn from you what you said, because you said for this you need to overcome it with the light. First of all, you need to become aware of the darkness of the challenges within you, and then you can make decisions yeah. if you use the oil, which means wisdom. Absolutely, right. So for me, um, for my eight nights of Hanukkah, I actually have eight different traits that can be positive or can be negative. And I'm going, for myself, I'm going, to, I'm going to spend each night of Hanukkah looking at my candles and working on that trait and saying, well, that trait, I want it to become a positive trait. So if I have the trait of being jealous, I want to use that in a positive way. Um, 
there's a perfect example. This week I spoke to Rabbi Rosenfeld and I sent him the picture that we had of our Shabbat together, of all of us being together. It was such an amazing, all of the Shabbats have been unbelievable. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rabbi Katzin. Thank you, Rabbi Delman. Thank you, Rabbi Pollock. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. It was just wonderful. Now, all of those have been amazing. So I sent Rabbi, me and Rabbi Rosenfeld and I have a conversation and I sent him a picture of one of the Shabbatons. And he said to me, I am so jealous. Now that was not a bad jealous. What did he mean? That meant I am jealous that I did not have the opportunity to do that. And that is a very good jealousy. So yeah, I think all of these traits that we have, we, we can use them for positive or for negative. Yeah, Rabbi. What do you see? <laughs> oh my you gosh, remember, wow. Remember Alex and Yael? I cannot, I am so happy to see you. Hello guys. Hello guys. Good to see you. Happy Hanukkah Sameach. Good question. Where, where are you? This is like the, you just made my Hanukkah even more bright and light than it was before. Thank you, thank you. We thank decided you. to stop by for just a minute to say hello and wish you a happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Who is that? Leah. Who is that? Yeah. Leah, she is Leah. Yeah, Leah says hello. How old is, how old is Leah? Uh, is this months. yeah five months in this month in yeah, December? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Are you in New York? Are you in Israel? Where are you? No, no, no we're in, in, Brooklyn. in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Very close to Avenue I. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Avenue Y. <laughs> so we've been doing we've been doing Shabbatones upstate up here. Uh -huh. We've been doing yeah we've been doing actually couple Shabbatones. Mm, nice. If you're if you're feeling ready to do it, <laughs> uh, sure. One day, I, I do. <laughs> she's always she's ready for anything. She's By the way, for... what about skiing, Alex? You know, Alex is a pro skier. If you're just gonna throw a skiing uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> opportunity, what do you think? Of after, course, after sure. in New York, we're gonna do it. Of course, I'll be the first one there. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fay, I want to tell you, Alex, Alex, and and I go together. Alex, when did you join Sinai? Tell us. Which year? When was it? Uh, I wish I remembered. It was like 96? 1996, Dr. Faye. How many years? Yeah. 1996. Yeah. So we need to be in touch, not a month, not a year, but decades, correct? For sure. To see the light and to see the joy. You know, um, Rabbi, we're talking about miracles. Look at Alex and Yael. Their story is a miracle, right? This yeah. Do you remember this story, Rabbi? How he decided he wants to find a wife. On the computer, he finds this gorgeous girl all the way in Israel, and he flies to Israel, and they come back, and they get married, and now they're sitting over there with this gorgeous little Leah, who's five months old. Is that not part of the miracle of Hanukkah? It's a yeah. night of miracles. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Gorgeous as always. Congratulations to you again. It's a wonder. We had a wonderful wedding, and Bar Baruch Hashem, we have an amazing Leah. We want to share many more joyful occasions with you and everybody here. Dr. Faye, please continue. Thank, Thank you, you guys. So I'm, I'm, uh, we're just gonna go because we have to put her to sleep. But it was great to see you, and yeah. uh, we'll Hanukkah see. You. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. We'll see you bye. very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Amazing. Rabbi, this night is all about miracles. Right. I, I'm so honored to be part of Rage. I'm so honored to have people like Alex in my family, in my life, to have some Harina in my family, in my life. I love you all so much. Julia, my heart, all, all, all of them, Rabbi, all of your children. I just love, I love them all so much. Um, so that's my, my goal, actually, for this, for this week, Rabbi, is I wrote down eight characteristics that I'm going to be using as I look at the Hanukkah candles every night, that I'm going to say to myself, yeah, this could be negative, but the light of Hanukkah is a miracle. It's going to take me to a positive place. So tonight's, tonight's was um, the, the negativity, the, what, the story about my daughter and turning it into becoming a very positive person. And tomorrow night is that one that I was talking about of how 
very often we think that other people have it better than we do. And we don't, we don't understand or we don't realize that we have it the best, that there's no reason to want what somebody else has because it's not really better. It's our, our life is the best life. What we have, what we own, what we, what we have, who we are, that is the best. And that's, my, that's gonna be mine for tomorrow night. And Rabbi, I'm, I'm more than happy to join you for any other nights of Hanukkah to share what it is I am using for that night. Cause I, I have eight of them that I'm gonna be working on. So we're ready to do eight. At least I'm ready to do and share it. I want to thank you, Dr. Fee, so much. I want to thank everybody for joining us. If you want, Dr. Fee, we can do it 8.30 each night, it, not tomorrow. Yeah. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow we can, you know, give you a break. <laughs> and, but Sunday night, and, and, and well, Sunday night actually also. Any time. Okay, let's do it 8.30, Dr. Fee. Let's. Tentatively, tentatively yep. 8.30. Let's. Thank you so, so much. I want to wish everybody amazing holiday of lights, light in your lives, and we should share these lights with each other. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you so much. Amazing. Happy, happy, yeah. happy, happy, happy.